Guys, you're really gonna enjoy this video today. If you caught our Made in America series where we built this gate last week, well, today we're gonna install the gate. It's a very complex process. I've got Ryan Sloop with Sloop Fence right here. I've got Mark and Alan with SWI, and we have Ken from Forever Fence, and today we're gonna put this fence up. Now, Mark, you guys have, SWI has a uh, YouTube channel, is that right? Yeah, SWI Fence on YouTube, and if you're interested in stuff like this, check us out. Yeah, if you like construction. I love watching construction videos on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. We've got toys, we've got stuff, we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on on the farm today. Today is the day that we install the new Stony Ridge Farm Gate, which is right over here. We're gonna be getting rid of the Mighty Mule Gate right here, and we're gonna be installing an automatic gate system for the farm for safety purposes to keep people from getting crushed in our gate and also for reliability purposes when we've got a $350 gate opener versus this really nice gate opener. It's really gonna make the farm look good and it's gonna make it safe for when we have you guys here for classes like how to butcher chickens and how to butcher hogs. So come along, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We'll introduce you guys to all the contractors that are here working today and we'll get this gate up. All right, woo! I ain't afraid of work, I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. So we've got Forever Fence and Rail here. This is Ken and Griffin. And you guys met Ken last week in the video where we did the fence factory tour, the gate factory tour. Ken doesn't say much. He can't he can't say woo really no. good, but uh can Griffin do it? Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Mark Olson and Alan Olson with SWI out of Wyoming, right? Yep. You guys are the largest fence builder in Wyoming. Is that correct? Uh, maybe arguably. Arguably? Okay. Well, the smallest people that build the biggest fences. There you go. <laughs> and we've got Ryan Sloop, a.k.a. Yep. the, uh, the where, where is it you live? Mooresville area? Yeah, the Mooresville area. In the Mooresville area of North Carolina. And he's brought his cool tool right here, this bobcat with an auger bit on it. So we're going to have some fun, get to work, and we'll walk you guys and talk you guys through this whole process. Literally, the gate went down in 45 seconds. <laughs> ah, awesome. Now we just got to take the gate hangers off. To answer your question, guys, should you cap your post or will they fill full of water and bust? This post is full of water and it didn't bust. A lot of people have been asking that question on the farm about our farm fencing. So that's interesting, though, is it? It tastes like copper. I wonder what it tastes like. So what we're doing right now is we're just trying to figure out where we need to weld these hinges onto this post so that the gate is exactly perfectly level and lines up so that when they close you don't have a staggered gate. Um, looks good. So we've got the laser behind us and we're just kind of stringing everything out. This is pretty critical. So with the hole being offset, if we weld it on the wrong way and we weld on with the skinny part towards the post right here, it'll line up like that and we won't have any room for our hinge to rotate. So when you're welding these on, it's really important to make sure you weld them on the correct way so that they're offset hinges and that gives you that little bit of a gap right here so the post, so that the hinge can rotate. So if you're welding those on, don't screw that up. And there's a little ball bearing in this particular one. Don't lose that ball bearing either. I'm Alan Olson with SWI. Uh, I started welding in high school when I was a sophomore, so I don't know, 15, 18 years ago, somewhere in there.
Milwaukee packouts. Tough, even tough enough to stand on. <laughs> Guys, we were seriously worried about the truck breaking in two when we loaded this much concrete. This is 25 80 pound bags of concrete. All of the controls are going to be mounted and the solar panel is going to be mounted. This is a completely solar system. We've already got the gate hung. All the controls are going to be mounted on steel posts and those steel posts are going to be set in concrete. What's that called, bud? These are post hole diggers. Clam diggers. Clam diggers? <laughs> Can't catch anything with them though. Let me ask you something, sir. Yeah. How does a man with yellow shoes expect to dig a hole? No safety shoes? My shoes aren't digging the hole. That's all up here. <laughs> this is a 190 watt solar panel. A little bit more than the little 10 watt that the Mighty Mule came with. These holes will hold the posts, two posts that the gate controllers or the operators themselves will mount to. Mrs. Stony Ridge is operating the water truck. So we're getting ready to mix some concrete and we needed water down here. We don't have any water down here, so. These guys are being sassy to each other. <laughs> Mark's hangry. Mark is hangry. How many cheeseburgers are you ready to eat, sir? I don't want any cheeseburgers. I want a Diet Pepsi. Oh, he wants a Diet. Di <laughs> I need a cream. Diet Coke and a veggie burger, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> this is an automatic SW325 swing gate operator, 24 volt DC. And this will be integrated with Josh's 190 watt solar panel. We're getting ready to put the concrete around these posts, the support posts, and it'll probably take about 300 pounds of concrete per operator to concrete these in and make sure that they're secure and won't move during operation. You know how to work this thing? Teach me how. Push the break. Release the brake, push it back to push it forward. Don't touch the gas. Hit the button. button. Brake release. I got it released. Alright, go! Two buttons. Easy breathe. Rare sight. Hey, make sure you get the shot of Josh working. Right there. It's working. Wait a minute, doesn't every bag come with a hose in? Make sure you don't edit that out. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda what I think when I hear your little theme song. <laughs> hide your wife, hide your kids and come on down to Tony Ridge or something like that. <laughs> uh, bring your wife, bring your kids. Sorry.
All right, guys, so we're at the end of day number one here, and we're gonna take you around and show you, but basically we're just waiting on concrete to dry. We went through, I guess, 20 bags of uh, sackcrete, 80 pound bags of sackcrete, and we'll walk you around real quick and I'll show you. These guys, you guys a little bit tired? No. No? You wanna keep working? Work yeah. through the night? Yep. Well, we're just waiting on the concrete to dry. These guys could work all night. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fence, uh, by the way, this is what we have. Controller number one, controller number two, and way out here is our solar panel, way out there. So we didn't want the solar panel to be right here at the gate. This is the gate setup right here. We'll walk you through. Again, stick around to the end of the video. We're gonna walk you through the entire process of how all of this works. So stick around to the end if you're curious about getting a gate like this for your own place. See you tomorrow. All right, we're on day number two here. And these boys are already out trenching. A big shout out goes to North Carolina 811 for marking our property 12 hours after we needed it marked. I uh, really appreciate that. Six phone calls. What, what a, guys, let me know if you've had any frustration with that. They want you to call before you dig, so we're trying to do the right thing. And uh, I called it in last Tuesday. Today is this Tuesday. And they said, well, we need 72 hours. <laughs> I guess that's 72 hours. I don't know. So anyhow, they did come out and they marked this morning at six o'clock in the morning. They were supposed to be done yesterday by close of business. We've got this ditch dug right here, which runs from the controllers. That was my rant, by the way. I need an early morning rant with my coffee. <laughs> uh, right here is, is the controller. We have a ditch dug to code all the way through to our solar panel which these guys are over here wiring up right now they had to pull the fish tape and it's all in conduit right here cool day two let's have some fun Ryan Sloop right here with his nice fancy True Work shirt on. Yep. <laughs> All these fence guys wear True Work. It's awesome, dude. I have a coupon code down in the video description for True Work. I want to thank you for coming. He's just volunteering his time to come out here and let us use his machine. Lives about an hour away. Awesome. So you're digging the trench for the controller. Uh, for the call box. Call box where you hit the button. Yep. Nice. In the call box. Good stuff. Awesome machine. We're right here at the secondary operator. The primary operator will be over there on the other side of the road. This one will get its signal and its control inputs from that operator on the other side. And what we did was we just uh, added some knockouts as you can see right here because we didn't have enough three quarter inch knockouts. And so we've got power coming into this operator from the solar panel, but we also need to get communication out and power out to the primary operator. And what we used was this handy dandy pull saw kit. As you can see that plates pretty stout and so that carbide tip hole saw bit allows us to drill these holes fairly easily. Imagine doing what I just did here, and we still got some work to do. We gotta dress it up a little bit, pack it down, but imagine doing that with a clutch tractor, man. Holy cow. Little T is a monster for doing this kind of stuff, and all you gotta do is hit forward pedal, reverse pedal. Super easy, super happy with this tractor, man. That Yanmar kicks butt. Right, it's midday on day two. We've got the trench dug out here all the way to the control box where you punch a keypad to get into the house. We also have to dig across the road and I know there's a phone line. We've located the phone line right there. It was only that deep. Good gracious, I can't believe it was only that deep. Uh, 
beware if you're ever scraping your driveway. We just got done using the excavator here. We're gonna bury this conduit and it's gonna go up to a sensor that'll be placed in the ground right here. So if we're coming out of the gate, the gate will automatically open as we drive over that sensor. So guys, what you're seeing here is called an inductance loop. There's a loop of wire right here. It's basically a giant metal detector. When you ride over with the ATV, the UTV, a car, a truck, or a tractor, it will automatically sense and open the gate right here. That's for exiting our driveway. For entering the driveway, there's also gonna be a sensor buried so that the gate won't close if somebody's blocking the entryway. So is there some sort of competition between you and Mark and uh, I noticed he just took the controls from you. It's a pride thing. It's, it's a pride it's thing? It's a short man pride thing. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> your first time to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. This piece of property was really overgrown and worn out. So much of a transformation has been made with this farm since day one. We've been here about six years. Ken, with Forever Fence, has got to roll out. He's got to go back to Ohio, is that right? Yep, got to go back. Oh, so, long drive. I don't envy you. He's got a seven and a half hour drive. Uh, the guys from SWI are here from Wyoming, actually. They're just driving through the country, visiting other fence companies, so. Small 30 hour drive. Yeah, 30 hour drive. So, Ken, thanks a million Thank for all of your help with this. Guys, if you didn't see the video where this gate was being constructed, uh, we went up to DSI, Digger yep. Specialties. Freeman, Indiana. Freeman, Indiana. And he, he's got to do the woo better. So we're going to do an outro with the woo with Ken. We'll see you next time, Ken. All right? Woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> Believe it or not, this is what the driveway is made out of down here. This driveway has been here for probably 60 years. It has brick, chips, rocks, all sorts of stuff down in here. Old asphalt. And underneath this square is the sensor, the driveway sensor. And another square is being marked by Mr. Olson right here, right? Yes. Doing the square right in here? Yep. And that's to keep the gate from closing on somebody that might be parked here, right? Vehicles. Vehicles. Okay, Vehicles. cool. So that detects a vehicle magnetically from under the ground just like the other sensor. Correct, yeah. It creates a magnetic field so it senses the metal in the vehicle. Awesome, cool, interesting stuff. Kudos to Little T, the Little TYM 254, man. That thing's awesome. What a great backfilling tractor. So we'll rake off and do the rough backfill with the TYM 254, and then we'll take the vent track with the landscape rake and fix all that up. All this rock that's piled up right here, we'll use the 254 and the landscape rake on the vent track and fix it all up. It's gonna look great. This is a job, man. This is a lot more job than I thought it was gonna be. Really proud that the 254 got in this ditch, just went down there and just shoveled all that stuff right back into the ditch. Did a great job. Uh, I've got to roll over this and pack it down a little bit more or we'll have a little divot right there. Right now we're firing up the welder and getting ready to weld a photo eye onto the outside of the gate right here. That photo eye is to prevent the gate from closing on a vehicle. There are a lot of fail safes in this gate.
All right, guys, we're wrapping up day number two. We'll see you in the morning, day three, and we're just about done. I've got a little bit of skid steer work. I've got to move a bunch of rock right here in the morning before these guys get here, and we'll be wrapping everything up. All the sensors are in the ground. All the uh, laser sensors are going up right here, and we've just got to mount up the controller. Rad. Day three, adjustments, right? Yep. Adjustments and putting the hangers on, so come along. This has the SOS siren activated Yelp feature. So in other words, there's a sensor inside the gate opener right here, and we're all just about done. We're about buttoned up. All the limits are set, everything. The gate is absolutely beautiful, but we have to test the siren system. And I'm with Mark with SWI. Mark, you can tell us a little bit about the certification of the gate here. Uh, so there's a certain certification criteria that you got to meet for these gates, right? Yeah, so for your gate operator, you want it to be UL 325 compliant. Uh, all operators after 2016 do certain things to make sure that it's number one, safe for to be around people, which people are not supposed to use that. They need a separate pedestrian gate, which you have right behind this. Yep. But also we want to make sure it's not going to damage equipment. So gotcha. that's the two big concerns we have. So no beating cars to death and no squishing babies. Yeah, that's exactly it. Suicide <laughs> or dogs, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're gonna try out the siren right now? Luckily, I'm on the fire department where I live, so I've got a siren on my truck, and this is exactly how the fire department would Sweet. access the property if there was an event. So. Yeah, there was some fear here, and I actually visited our local fire department because I'm famous for setting things on fire, accidentally the woods or whatever. How in the world would you guys get in here to put our house out? Uh, they're like, oh yeah, we'd push our way through, we'd find a way through. Well, now we've got it siren activated, so check this out. Fence situation. <laughs> so this is set up now to stay open for an hour total. Is that right, Mark? Yeah, we've got several different settings. We can do it indefinite until you hit the reset button, 15 minutes, one hour. Gotcha. So I had them set it for the longest setting in case you had to get in and out with an ambulance or something like that. There is also a sensor up here in the driveway. So if you run over that sensor, it's a magnetic sensor. It picks up vehicles. It picks up anything big enough, like a zero turn mower, four wheeler, uh, utility vehicle, everything like that. He's coming back down through here to dust us again. But uh, guys, this was kind of a, a partnership, a joint partnership. So Mark with SWI and Ken with Forever Fence and Rail recognize that we had an unsafe gate here on the farm. Uh, so we partnered up to get this thing done. This is uh, cost wise, it's an expensive gate, but it's well worth it for the safety factor, for the safety factor for visitors on the farm, for the safety factor for us, for not hitting cars, not crushing people in it. Uh, I think it's well worth it. Thanks. Yeah, a ton. Mark, I appreciate nice it. Nice working with you. And you guys got to see Kim with Forever Fence. Mark will be back when we start building more farm fence. Uh, and you guys are out of Wyoming, but you guys service basically the whole United States. Is that right? Yeah, we try to be an industry leader in what we do. And gate automation plays a big role in that. Nice. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. We've got a gate here on the Stony Ridge Farm, and this thing is absolutely beautiful. I hope you guys have totally enjoyed uh, seeing this video series here. Look at that. Very, very nice. There is a sign here that says automatic gate and that's required by law. And again, the SOS is something that's really, really important so that this gate will automatically open if a siren is heard, then they can come up here and save us. Good stuff. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge. I hope you enjoyed this little series. Thanks to Automatic, thanks to SOS, thanks to SWI, thanks to all these guys, Sloop Fence, uh, Ryan Sloop up there. Um, and Forever Fence and Rail, thanks to all these guys for pitching in. We all worked together and we got this thing in a three-day install. It was a job. We'll see y'all next time. Woo! Down.